Okay. Um, why don't you, Diana, uh, why don't we just, I'm going to call the meeting to order. I really don't want this to be a long meeting. Um, and we are going to do the minutes. We do have a quorum. And the other people um, were, are not official members anyway, if they, if they come. I hope they do. Um, so did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? I did. I had no problems with them. I congratulate Diane for being as efficient and uh, attentive as she has been in developing these meetings. Thank you. Cindy helped. Cindy always fills in the blanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, but Charlie, I'm going to tell you, in terms of uh, being specific, we're going to call her by her name. It's Diana. Oh, you don't to, I, <laughs> what did I say? Diane? Okay, Diana. Uh, I'm used to it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Um, All right. And I'm not Ed, Ed Gibson, and um, and April is not church office, but there we go. <laughs> We're all in a cognito. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, is any um, do I hear a motion to accept minutes as as e emailed out? So moved. And I seconded. I'll second that. No problem. Any discussion? Hearing none. Then I say all in favor. Say aye. 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 Okay, they were um, unanimously approved. All right. So um, we will, let's see here, what time is it? 6.03. Just going to check my email to make, some, make sure somebody didn't email me something here. Um, I... They might check in. I'm going to give you guys one little bit of information. It doesn't have to go into the minutes particularly, but um, I want to give you an update on the master plan implementation update survey, the all town survey. Mm -hmm. We were hoping for approximately 600. Do you know how many respondents we got? 896. Whoa. Oh, good. Committed, huh? And, um, and, there is uh, the uh, the man from Piner Valley Planning Commission, Ken Colmia. Um, he said there were some, and I'm sorry I don't remember the number, so I'm not going to repeat it. Oh, there's Chris. That um, actually, um, you know, did it partially and didn't complete it. Can't count them. Hey, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi. Hi. Welcome. I was um, waiting. We're hopefully Dan's going to come too, but. Um, I was just giving the, the wonderful news about the master plan implementation survey update that we just creeped under the number 900 and, uh, and we're all very excited about that. There's a yep. lot of, there's a lot of, uh, there's steps to follow and, um, uh, you know, we have to make sure we understand how to present it to the planning board, present it to the it's a town at large because so many people participated that we don't want to lose the momentum of, of you know, people saying they, they participated and then never heard anything, which we mm -hmm. have heard in the past. We don't want that to happen. So, okay. Well, I tell you what, because this is meant to be a very short meeting, Rini cannot make it, Chris. Um, she had a, a conflicting meeting tonight. So what I know is this, um, Dan Lavalley is taking a course at UMass. The, the, um, professor is well known to us, Paul Contanzaro. He wrote Your Land, Your Legacy, and he's the one that um, has been so supportive of towns and also um, approved the grant application that um, Diana wrote for us to run the neighborhood outreach um, a year and a year and many months ago, almost two years ago now. Um, so he's very much on board with land conservation. He has two types of students in this particular class. One are called the professionals, and the other are the regular students. And Dan is in the professional category. His, his tuition is being underwritten by the Conservation Commission. He's not doing it for credit. But the idea is that he's a member of a town conservation commission. And he's really enjoying it. And he sends me links all the time. He's reading a, a terrific textbook. And he has in mind the idea of doing a presentation to the town about what he looks, you know, what he learns. And that, that's all wonderful. So a couple of weeks ago, he told me that um, the regular students have to do a student project. And... Uh, 
he he told Paul that you know he was gonna uh, he had some ideas. I said the best way to do this is to bring this into committee and let let us contribute our thoughts. Um, so I just wonder. I have some of you threw some thoughts at me. Rini threw some thoughts at me. So how about if we just start brainstorming? And Charlie, you start. What what is it you? already thought about as potential uh, ideas for what this student might work on. Yeah, I, uh, I have a background in which I had a lot of kids working with me on projects. And usually I think the project, especially if, uh, from an academic perspective, should have a beginning, middle, and end. And the things that I have noted in my renewed experience within the town uh, is that some of these maps that we've had are getting dated and especially given some of the objectives of the open space committee we need to communicate to the residents so i thought one map was the uh, the open space properties in the town or cons conservation lands in the town it was last updated in 2012 <clears throat> and i'm sure pioneer valley would have all this on their computer no, you, mean also, pioneer, you, you mean pioneer valley planning commission right that's that correct yeah, yeah okay. and uh I recognize that things I'm suggesting, one would probably cost money, and and two would have to be closely coordinated with the Conservation Commission. But maps of that nature, of the conservation lands, are and and this is something I have a sensitivity to. Um, somewhat. Uh, ignorant of the actual demarcations of the uh, aquifer. And I noticed that that map in the open space and recreation plan was quite nice. It's a little congested. Many of the overlays could be removed, but that could be something in sort of a pamphlet that we communicated to the town people in the town hall or at meetings and so on. So they understand exactly the nature of what we're doing with the monies that we invest in these properties that are to conserve the aquifer. In addition to that, and maybe Diana will help with, uh, I think the people who could donate some of their resources uh, in terms of their wills and so on, and some of the uh, ways they can donate to open space issues in the town of Southampton. I, I would expect there is a pamphlet somewhere. I saw I, two, four or five years ago, I had a, um, a page, a uh, single eight by 11, <clears throat> that listed some of the options, a simplified version as distinct from some of the resources that are out there. The, uh, what was the name of the word? <clears throat> I, I'm going to have to look through some papers here. Um, Mass Woods, there's a webinar there that is maybe a little congested for the average uh, town resident, but simplifying that and putting it in a pamphlet, again, it's going to cost some money and it's going to cost, uh, <clears throat> you know, some, uh, some effort on the part. Anyway, it's, it's, it's uh, coordinating it and especially coordinating it, it has to be done uh, in, a, in a group fashion with other committees. But those were my ideas when I just saw and I interpreted what Dan was uh, suggesting. So basically that is communication is the number one goal here and also figuring out how we can do something with what monies are available. Okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> no, don't shut up, let's just clarify. Um, so I, I wrote down some stuff that, you know, your primary goal here is to communicate and educate. I wrote down educate as well. Is that right? Yeah. Communicate yes. and educate. Um, and, um, and coordinate. Think, coordinate also with educate. other groups. Oh, and, well, that's part of our, our charge. So you're absolutely sure. right about that and yeah. coordinate. We don't want overlap. Yeah. But then um, along those lines, there's two things. One is to update current maps regarding lands that have been conserved in our town, whether yeah. it's under the Conservation Commission, the Water Commission, parks, we have we have multiple sort of boxes Sources, yeah. uh, of, of those, okay? And so, and yes, 
publication does cost money, but that, you know, and there are existing maps out there that, you know, could be utilized um, mm -hmm. to sort of meld them together. That's one thing. And the other is to um, educate the potential landowner who might want to conserve about what financial options are out there. And again, some of that has already been published, I think, but, but yes. perhaps that could be updated or considered, all right? Some of that yeah. is, is, from my understanding, right in Paul Contenzaro's you know, bailiwick. He really gets that. That's his expertise. And so maybe we can call on that anyway. Okay. Is, I, I, think I, I was gonna say, I think your, your land, your legacy is, is nothing but how to, how to conserve your land. So Charlie, weren't you talking more about bequeathing it in your will or something? Is that what you're talking about? Um, uh, I'm not sure what I'm talking about. It could be uh, that your land and your legacy is something I'm, I, I, I need to become more familiar mm -hmm. with. But I remember having a sheet no. okay. five years ago in which there was three, four, five options that were easily digestible. If it was in a pamphlet, uh, it might be easy to anticipate People think I can understand this, and I'll think about it as far as my resources and my my eventual d dispersing what assets I have. <clears throat> Does that make I, sense? Yeah, I think it's not a bad idea because, for instance, with the landowner whose property abuts Durrell's path, you know, I said, "Oh, we don't know what we want to do with our land," and all. If we had this little pamphlet, your land, your legacy is very good, but it is like this big you know, not a book, but magazine kind of thing. If we had just Where, a where pamphlet, is that? Where can I get that? I have and, a copy. I have a copy of it. Diana, do you have any extra copies of that at all? Oh, I would have to go burrowing. I'm not sure. But okay. um, are there, are there some? The Paul Canton Zero loves to distribute it. It's his book. So if you send oh, him an email, it's, it's a book. Like okay. Um, yeah. Maybe who, who here has a copy? Do you have one, to Chris? You... No, I've just had it online. I have it it's online. online. Okay, we're online at the town. I think no, it is the Mass Woods. Mass website. Woods. That's Mass his Woods. website. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll look that up. Do do the rest of you have uh, you Janet? You were at those meetings and April. I, I think I have a copy. I just don't know tonight where it is. But oh I yeah, can, that's fine. I just want to make sure. I loan it to Charlie. And and I have a copy that I can loan you too. It's a hard, it's a glossy magazine. It's lovely. It's a beautiful production. But, but when you get into it, a lot of it will say things like talk to your lawyer, you know, and maybe yeah. that doesn't yeah. help. No, yeah. no, no. It, 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 give, it gives you a lot of case studies and things. I'm, I'm looking at it right now with my family, and, and um, it's complicated. You, you start looking at one thing, and it leads you to another thing. And it, it's not, I mean, it's very thorough, but it's not easy to digest if that's what you're, yeah. you know, look at a quick handout. is It's not, <laughs> but it's extremely yeah. good. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think people might like a quick handout just to start the thinking process and, you know, start developing the idea. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's not a bad idea. Um, sort of a you know, kind of a simplified version. That's a possibility. But what you just said, Chris, clicks for me that none of this is simple or straightforward. It's all complicated. It does require multiple considerations, whether it be legal, whether it be family considerations, um, and then there's you know, surveying the land, and then there's you know, all these things that come into play, um, etc. So, um, but I, I, I'm, write, I'm writing them down anyway, um, Charlie, as good as ideas to start with. Can we go to someone else? Did someone else want to, uh, Janet, how about you? Did you have some ideas of what this student might do? Well, the only thing that I, I have problems with or concerns about is outreach, Let, letting the people in the town know about our committee um, and the friends group and all the different ways that they can contribute um, not only financially, but intellectually. And, and I think we need to tell the townspeople, I don't know, about a newspaper article or flyers or on the town website or whatever, but we need to reach out to the community a little bit, I think. Our committee started kind of new, so, you know, we need to go there and, and talk to the people. 
I'm with you on that. Um, and let me just insert here at this point that after this meeting, I'm gonna zoom in on the Friends of Open Space board meeting. Uh, they fortunately keep me on their email list. So I'm gonna go and listen on that. And I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put that concept in their heads that mm -hmm. not only building a, let's call them core of volunteers, but also how the heck are they advertising this? They've now got a website going. I have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, just generally speaking, I, I also think they need to develop a fundraising arm and I'm volunteering to try to help do a fundraiser at some point, maybe in the next six or eight months to just get that kind of concept going. So- and Like Carly um, said, we need to communicate. And I think that's always a great objective to communicate with the townspeople and with each other and the friends and all our different arms of this committee. Um, and additionally, because we're, we're going to work in concert with all our other boards and committees, select board, et cetera, but once we get the final um, data compiled of this updated survey, we'll find out where open space and conservation falls in terms of the priorities of this town. And that that's that's another area of communication and um, and advertisement that is critical for all of us on this. But mm -hmm. so your your idea is outreach and communication. Is that right? Yes. Any other thoughts on Janet? No, that's it. Thank you. That's great. How about you, April? Have you got um, I, I think that if the student is at all technologically savvy, then we should be able to use that, hopefully, um, in terms of being able to do uh, what we're talking about, maybe tech, technologically, um, instead of in paper or print. So wouldn't it be cool to have on our town website a map of the town, the assessor's map, and then be able to click on overlays. I've seen it, Westfield had it for a while. I can't find it now. So it must have cost them a pretty penny and maybe it's not there anymore. But you could click on their maps and see the different overlays for zoning, um, everything. It was very cool. And it would be mm -hmm. kind of fun to do that with the protected lands. That's great. Um, Chris, were you and I talking about town website issues recently? I can't remember what meeting we were in. <laughs> was it you that I was talking uh, to about? Probably. I was just talking about how complicated our website is and how non-logical it is to find anything. Yeah. I, I, we're going to be doing some, some overhaul at some point. Uh, what I've heard is the, um, the same person, company, that works on the library website, we're going to try and grab for the town website. Oh, okay. Well... Okay, so if there's something to insert, if this student project could be partially that is to, you know, do the sort of the part that the webmaster, whomever that person might be that does the library thing, could, you know, interject or, you know, in, infuse that into the um, newly updated town website, you know, just prep it because that person won't be doing the, the body of the information. It'll just, that person would just be pulling the website together, it would be my assumption. Is that correct, Chris? I have no idea. <laughs> Don't even ask me about a time frame. <laughs> okay. And our town website is not, I mean, it's no different from most of the town websites in terms of trying to find things like zoning bylaws and all of yeah. that. It's just oh, difficult. Lord. I mean, I, I can spend hours trying to research stuff in my line of work and yeah. finally I get frustrated and I have to call somebody and they say, oh, well, look here. And I'm going, well, why did you put that stupid yeah. thing there? That's exactly. <laughs> no, that's what I meant. It's not user friendly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So it's, at some point it's going to get, I think in the next, hopefully the next couple of months, it's going to get a bit of a facelift. That would be terrific. Okay. Anything else, April, that you wanted that's to add on that? Okay. Diana, you got some thoughts? <laughs> well, I was thinking a young person, some um, muscle power maybe when we get going on this, uh, on the on the Manhattan Meadows trail restoration because part of that is volunteer labor, but you know I'm not sure that's the best use of the person and maybe we can get other, you know, random people to do that, and then also in connects you know related to that grant writing because we're going to have to do another grant to get the other side of the Manhattan Meadows done and but 
I just don't know how, you know, how feasible that is. Those are just the things that I personally need help with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but on the other hand, again, I don't know if this will be a graduate student or an undergrad. Yeah. I would, I'd hope to know. But that's not a skill that just automatically, I mean, you've got years of experience, right? The grant writing part. So you're good at it. You, you, yeah. If you could supervise somebody on a, you know, can you research this? Can you research that? That might be helpful for you. So you're not stuck doing it. Yeah. Over yeah. I, I, no, I think probably the idea is about... Well, especially if he's in this class with Mr. Catanzaro, maybe the kinds of things that they're focusing on would be the, the most logical, like mm -hmm. financing of conservation and, you know, um, uh, town awareness, those kind of things. I, I think, Di uh, <clears throat> Diana, that... Uh... Dan would be very supportive, he's made the suggestion in the Conservation Commission, to start considering for Clearwater a project that designs the trails, put in bridges, and so on. If, if this kid who was available would work with Conservation Works and come up with a tentative design, which eventually, if it's professional enough, we could get maybe some state aid to help us with. Mm -hmm. But that's another area where I think there's some need for uh, a diligent study of what you actually want to do to clear those trails and to find the boundaries and so on. Right. I'm going to stop just for one second and welcome Paula. She came. Um, hi, Paula. Hi, Cindy. Apologize for being delayed. That's okay. That's all right. We're just going around and talking about potential proje projects because we hear that we, we're crossing our fingers that we can have a student in the conservation class work with us. Um, and um, we're just throwing out ideas at this point. Um, so the last one Charlie just said was possibly, and this is Charlie McDonald, not your Charlie. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because you were also on Charlie's iPad. That threw me off. You both have that. <laughs> um, Sorry. That's okay. So anyway, he was just talking about the potential for working on trail design, uh, specifically on the new, the newest acquisition, the um, Clearwater Woodland. Um, and working with Conservation Works, too. They might get oh, some instruction there, too. Would it yeah. be helpful to know, you know, did Dan have a specific person in mind? And then no, also no. I, I don't know if you heard the, the preamble of, of this whole thing, but um, he is in this class. Did you hear the part? Well, Paula certain didn't, certainly didn't, where there's, uh, it's, it's a UMass class. Yeah, and it's for, I heard it's, all that. Well, Paula didn't, so it's for credit. And there's uh, two categories of students. Uh, with some of them, they're doing it for credit, working towards a degree. And the other is um, people who are um, already, uh, you know, working in some regard in a town um, capacity, maybe conservation commission or something, and um, aren't doing it for credit. And um, but the for credit students need a student project. What we don't know is number of hours. We because we I asked him all these questions and he didn't answer me. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, we don't know how many well, hours we get. We don't know um, who supervises. We don't know anything about the background or the potential for the student. Go ahead. To look, uh, to look at it from a different point of view, could we give Dan, you know, several of these ideas, refine them and present them to him, and then he could propose them and say, you know, students could say, wow, that's exactly what I want to work on or something like that. Yeah, that that's kind of what I had in mind, Diana. That's why we're yeah. sort of, you know, brainstorming right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see, Chris, how about you? Do you have any ones that you want to throw out? Um, actually, I was part of one of what Charlie said. Um, my first thought would not be necessarily to re rework or update the current, if that's what I understood, the, the current trail maps that we have, you know, like for, uh, I forget what we have, actually, we've got uh, Manhattan, we've got um, Nancy Whittemore, we've got a couple of others, those little green and white maps. I don't know that there's much need to really update those right now. And I think that might be a bigger thing that CONCOM really needs to organize rather than than us. But I do like the idea of doing some sort of mapping of the watershed, because I think people do not have a clue about water protection, um, 
and the, the whole purpose of getting the Pomeroy Meadow property when we see that there's already you know, another house already going up across the street. So where's the protection of any watershed? You know, I mean, just trying to help people understand what a watershed is and map it out around town so that it's not just Pomeroy Meadow, but I assume there's some over on Cook Road, I'm guessing. There is, uh, yeah. uh, et cetera, to, to try and help people just understand, you know, what the watershed is and why we need to protect it. Uh, I think that would be a great project, frankly. Um, and I'm going to just say that Rini emailed me um, because she couldn't make it tonight. And she focused, she said, consider focus on water protection wetlands. That was her suggestion to uh -huh. consider that. And um, am I right? Tell me, anybody. Do we have anything published about, except for a very broad general understanding of water protection and water and, and wetlands, do we have anything specific to Southampton? We're not talking about updating anything. We're actually talking about creating something we've never done before. Is this right? Is it, there is a map in the open space and recreation plan early oh. on in that it's a, it's a regular map that's got to be in a computer somewhere. It's yeah. very congested. It needs to be simplified, but it's there. It's but it's very not, nice. Yeah, I, I do know what you mean. Yeah, um, that's one that's could be you know could inform something specific for us. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. a student, if they're savvy, could take it from BioMap. Could take it from um, what's the yeah. name of that map that Brittany Guterman showed us? I forgot. The uh, name of that. Um, but those have like water recharge districts. Those are overlays, yeah. mm -hmm. like you know yeah. and. So all that is certainly out there on the web, but it isn't, you know, you got to yeah. know what you're doing when you go in there and to actually make yeah. a map of Southampton from that would take some expertise. Yeah, I think that would be a great, great project. I really do. Um, mm -hmm. So focus it. Uh, so it was sort of combining ideas here. We're including the idea of educating. We're including the idea of coordinating. We're also um, talking more specifically about water protection, watershed, wetlands. And then I think, tell me you folks that go to the CONCOM meetings, are vernal pools being looked at more? Uh, vernal pools are difficult. They have to be authorized by uh, the, the uh, you know, the wetland protection. And it's not easy to do. There's a lot of vernal pools around. However, they're not identified by the state as uh, legitimate, as it were. <clears throat> yeah. So the protection of them, and they don't have a buffer zone <clears throat> by definition in the regulations. Uh, their protection is something that is, uh, is not easily handled. You know, it's not easily carried through via the regulations because they don't have a definitive idea of what vernal pool is a regulated and a, and a, and a genuine vernal pool. Yeah. At, at the same time, I think through Mass Fish and Wildlife, there is a certification program for vernal pools. Yes. Uh, which any landowner would need to initiate, I believe. Um, yeah. And I, I, I know I've seen a some some website reference on that. I read it a long time ago, and I, I don't remember how complicated that is, but I know there is a way to get those certified. So that could be, you know, I don't know if there's a way to, <laughs> I don't know how you map a vernal pool when it's not that time of year, but um, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think those are on Biomap too as are well. They? Yeah. Well, ones, ones that have already been identified, yeah. Correct, yeah. yeah. Has um, Dan presented this option of the intern to CONCOM as well? No. Not to my knowledge, and not in a, in a meeting, not in a meeting. May he, he may have done it via uh, I mean, really emails or something like that. What we're discussing here is cer certainly of yep. their concern as well. And CONCOM is not meeting again until yeah. the 21st, so. Yeah. Um, well, um, I think I did invite Marla to the, tonight's meeting. She she couldn't make it, I guess. Um, but whatever we come up with, we should share with Marla anyway, just for her input, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But there's three of you here that attend those meetings, right, Chris? No, yes. I don't. I only oh, no. do on a case by case I, basis. I see. Well, Charlie, I usually do. I usually do. Yeah. So in any event, um, we. Definitely will coordinate. I don't believe he's reported to anybody else. I think I'm the one he's communicated with. And I'm beginning to think he forgot about tonight's meeting because he said he was going to come. Um, 
So we've got more ideas. What about you, Apollo? Have you had a chance to think of anything a student might do in relationship to open spaces? No, to be honest with you, I am. Um... I'm feeling so very new to this whole thing. I really don't even know exactly what your committee does. Oh, okay. So I'm kind of just, just still trying to figure out where I am here. Well, thank you. But I think for... the whole thing with the watershed is a great idea because as far as I know, if I ever needed to find anything out about that kind of information, I always had to make a trip to the town hall and try to figure out who to talk to. It would be nice if we did have something that, you know, people could actually go to and look it up. So you are, um, am I right, speaking as a, a realtor, because you might have somebody that's looking for property or something? Or right. Or even just, you know, someone who um, just wanted to know, you know, what there is in town. You, you yeah. really have no place to go to find out. Okay. Just look up. Yeah, you're right. Good point. I think it's good. Um, the only thing I had to, well, first of all, Paul, I want to answer one thing. Do you remember at the last meeting, I gave you um, like a handout draft that looks sort of yes. like, well, if you go to the, um, here. if you go to the third page of that, it says open space committee charge. And I can email that to you if you want. That no, no, I have that. Okay, this describes what our committee does. Okay. So you said you weren't sure. And it's fine. We, we know we have to be careful about overlapping goals and activities and everything. And, I, and, and actually, Rini's brought that up. Chris has brought it up to me. Um, we got to make sure, and we, you know, there, there are similarities to Conservation Commission, but we're, we want to make sure we don't overlap and have like parallel process going on. But you can look at that charge and that, that explains more of what we're doing, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Cindy, just one point. Um, just to yes. chime in on something that Diana said about eventually getting some volunteers to help do something down at Manhattan when we get ready to, to do that. Um, and maybe you did this already before I got on, so apologies about Dan's new Facebook group. I haven't mentioned it. Um, okay. Uh, well, Dan, Dan, being his eager beaver self, um, set up a uh, Facebook group for people who would like to volunteer in town to do any kind of community activity. Uh, so not just limited to, you know, concom type stuff, but I think his overall goal is to be able to create a pool of people that would be available to help clear trails and maintain trails um, for concom slash open space. Um, and also develop a pool of kind of that demographic that we're having a hard time attracting to be involved in town committees and boards, et cetera. So he started this about a week ago, I think I saw it first on Facebook. And last I looked, he's got 175 people signed up. Wow. Now, how many of those will show up on a given day? God knows. But I mean, there's, and it's like I say, it could be activity for anything, for the historical society, for the school, for anybody and anybody. So I think at some point, uh, you know, as people start to post a project need that they have, uh, I know last night at Clark Chapman, we had to move some, some very heavy items <laughs> like major sleighs and things that have been in the barn because they're going to be re-roofing down there at the Historical Society. There were probably 10 people showed up, people I'd never seen before in my life, and it was done within a half an hour. So. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's a good initiative, and I don't know, I, I hope people will, you know, find some project that they can hook themselves into. And uh, anyway, just to say, Diana, I think we've got a pool of, bo of warm bodies that uh, we'll be yeah. able to pull up. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah. We need warm bodies. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I could maybe just as an aside, this isn't for the minutes, but we're in the middle of trying to get this ready to go out to bid. We're making progress, but we're still waiting for the federal <laughs> approval. Be more specific, Diana. What going on? About to the bid? Manhattan Meadows. Meadows, okay. yeah. Oh, the Mass Trails Grant, yeah. Yeah. Okay, because I'm looking at Paula's face and she's not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't, she, explain it a little bit more, Diana, because she's new on this committee. Explain that. Um, we, we received a grant from Mass Trails, which is a state agency, to restore the trails at Manhattan Meadows Conservation Area. And um, 
it should be going out to bid soon. It's a, a big project, but we're still, it's a state grant, but they have to wait on federal approval for all these grants. It's just sure. like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. And, you, and, and yeah. you know why, Paula, Mayhem Meadows is, you know where that is, sort of behind no. the, oh, it's, well, you know where the library is, East Street, right. and if you, um, go another, I don't know, 120 feet, you can see there's a conservation land that goes down into, on the right there. Yes. Um, that's called Manham Meadows. And uh, that suffered a very severe, a, a great deal of damage, not this recent summer, last summer, from a microburst that went around and it's in tremendous amount of damage. Big trees came down and uh, bridges are, were already needing work anyway. Um, so Diana wrote this grant application and um, she just explained where that stands right now. But part of it was to get um, volunteers and that's considered contributory towards the, the town part of it. And I, what was the per hour compensation, Diana, for volunteers? $31, that's just the standard rate. But yeah, you have to have a town match, you know, to show your good faith and also our match is a lot of it, well, not all of it, a big chunk is from the CPC, but some of it is also from volunteer work. So I will definitely ask somebody to post it on Facebook for me when we get okay. there. Yeah. So, so, so let me and add to, oh, Chris, go ahead, finish. No, just, just one tiny thing, just to say, having been with the federal government, their magical fiscal year ends September 30th. So I would hope if they're going to pronounce anything, they mm -hmm. would do it before September 30th. Well, I don't know why, why it's happening like this because it didn't happen with the land grants that we had to wait on the federal approval. Charlie Baker announced it. Yeah. It just said, be, you know, don't do it till we get the federal well, approval. Well, so. the federal probably hasn't given the state some of the money. I mean, there's got to be something coming in there. And yeah. Lord knows there's there's lots of decisions that have not happened at, at the federal level because it's in such yeah. disorganization at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Really? Um, so, um, let me just insert another thing here. And I, I mentioned Friends of Open Space. Um, I, w I wasn't going to say it was Dan's group because I didn't have his permission to do so, Chris. But when I go to that meeting after this meeting, I am going to public. <laughs> well, there you go. I could. There you. I will. I will. I will say it's on Facebook, and there's a person that's drawing together volunteers. So um, I'm trying to connect all these parts, you know, whether it's yeah. volunteers for the grant, volunteers for other projects, et cetera. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's all about communication. And I think one of the people on the Friends, is there a Jerry Jennings? Does that sound familiar? Yes. Yes. She's, already, she's on the group, so she knows. Oh, perfect. She's the one that's created the website for Friends of Open Space. Okay. Friends of Southampton Open Space. I'm pretty sure she's on the group, so. Yep. I have not personally met her, but I've seen a lot of emails from her, so that's good. Okay, so how um, do you how do you access the Facebook page <laughs> to get the uh, the volunteer list and so on? Is that at the town Facebook? No, or is it, it Dan's? It's a Southampton community page. Southampton community page. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's something I'm not familiar with. Okay. Yeah. Good. It's it's something actually I was gonna to suggest to Dan he might want to post it at some point on the regular town Facebook page too. Um, but I haven't seen him to talk to him. Um you have you just might want to email him, Chris, just to yeah. suggest that. And um I'm not very Facebook savvy at all. I've, I've you know, taken a, I got away from it and I back on a little bit, but um, Charlie, if you don't understand it, maybe somebody can help you with getting okay. on Facebook and on specifics on that. Well, I have a Facebook account. I mean, very few friends, but at least um, <laughs> I'm that, I'm that literate with it, but uh, <laughs> I get a lot of misinf. I get a lot of information that I really don't want. I have to exactly. hide some of the posts. So anyway, okay, uh, Southampton community community page. Right. So I'll try and track on that. Yeah, and if you get really stuck, Tammy Walunas is the person that is kind of managing that. Oh, is she? Okay. So you yeah. can always just go through her and just ask her how you get on. Okay, sounds good. Great, thank you. I only have one friend, and it's Chris Falls, and she tells me what else <laughs> I need to know. Okay. Um, and your granddaughter. Uh, she's not on Facebook. They're definitely not on Facebook. Um, so um, the only other thought I had for this student, and I'm going to throw out my idea, 
is that we're all, you know, working on our little smaller assessor map projects. And I didn't know if we could um, call in this student to help look at some of those. If we identified a parcel that might look like it met some of the criteria that we're looking for, that we could have that student help flesh out some of the details. Um, I will say this, I don't remember who, threw out the possibility that the student would approach landowners and I'm definitely against that absolutely yeah. we've had a lot of conversation about the the it needs to be a very gentle and, and it needs to be a very customized approach anytime we talk to a landowner and but someone I, from Southampton possibly too I don't yeah. even know that person's from Southampton but. well and might be somebody that isn't involved with our town after the end of semester. So that's the end yeah. of that, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to revise my um, my idea and just go with where we were sort of heading with the idea of somebody that could help develop um, a more comprehensive um, approach to creating something regarding wetlands, watershed, aquifers, vernal pools, and water, um, water protection. Um, and do it with the goal of informing the, the general public and anyone else who's interested in land conservation or development. Because I know the planning board gets requests for information on how they could create, you know, is there, is there a lot something that might be developable? We just got a big email today from somebody who um, thinks that he can carve out a piece of his land to, um, put it out for potential um, development or, you know, building a house on it for sale. So um, I think if the planning board had access to something like this, that would be extremely helpful to, to tell a landowner that as well. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody want to speak strongly for any of the other ideas or do we want to zero in on this one right now? We have to be a little more specific to this to this um, potential project. Um, I'm just wondering if we did map out the watershed, would it show all the stuff that's already built on the watershed? You mean other uh, development that's occurred on there? Yes. I mean, I you could show the watershed, but unless we show how built over it is, and, you know, every time you turn around, something is built, like, and including on the aquifer, then I don't understand the point of it. Well, then we should, right? We should yeah, show what's already built should. on it. And maybe the pros and cons, the, the, the big time negatives. Uh, we know that some of these um, land, uh, developments um, are supposed to not use uh, chemicals on their lawns. Yeah. And sometimes you say you drive by and you look at these beautiful green lawns and you think to yourself, hmm, maybe chemicals were used on them. You know, for these and subdivisions. No one Pardon me, Janet? No what? one monitors that. Well, it's supposed no. to be in the... Um, volunteered. In, <clears throat> yeah, it's not it's volunteered. In it's in the deed of a person when they buy their house, but no one monitors it. It's no. also in their... Um, what's that called? The um, oh, the committee that... Uh, subdivision um, committee... Homeowners Association. Yeah. Association. That's exactly Home it. Owners, it's, yeah. restrictive. it's restrictive for their covenants. Yes. They have a list of covenants when they build that they're not supposed to do things like that, that they pass on to the owners. And do they follow them? As, it's, it's a big well, time oversight. To. Exactly. <laughs> they're supposed to. But who's going to, who's going to go and check? That's no one. No one. Exactly. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But any maps associated with the aquifer could have multiple layers, especially if it's on a computer, one that shows where the development is relative to the watershed versus pristine properties that uh, might be of interest for this committee to address sometime in the future. Good. Yeah. Okay. Multiple. The other project on clear water and working with conservation works, to me, that might appeal to the academic because you've got a professional in conservation works in a need in terms of straightening out the trails and boundaries of that uh, property. So that would be my second choice after the map of the <clears throat> water uh, situation, aquifer in the town. Does it cost something to work with conservation works? I have no idea, but uh, if it does, we have to think about how we get that money in. Maybe you'd have a donation if it was something that someone 
<clears throat> the committee thought it was worth tracking on. Well, it costs money to hire conservation works, and then if they wanted to take someone under their wing, I don't know that they'd charge that for that, but certainly for them to do work in Clearwater, that costs money. Yeah, yeah. To do the work, I'm thinking of just getting a plan together, just a yeah. plan. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, something to address if we choose to have that as a priority. <clears throat> okay. Do we think that the um, the financial options concept um, is pretty well covered under your land, your legacy, um, at least at this point in time, and, and as a priority for the student? Or do we want to have that as another option for them? Uh, an abbreviated pamphlet or a brochure about what people could do yeah. with their assets if they choose to, something like an introductory. Abbreviated one, okay. Yeah, so that uh, it doesn't overwhelm them immediately. Okay. I would think that that exists somewhere. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, any other discussion on this? Because I've got three options focus essentially on this water protection concept next is the idea of working on trail design possibly with conservation works check on the financial aspect of that and then the third is an abbreviated um, publication on the um, financial options for um, for a potential landowner to conserve their land anything else should we they're having a meeting on the 21st for the conservation commission i'll make sure they're informed of our our interest in tracking on one or two of these things okay well maybe we'll have an answer by then charlie too because you know Ooh, really that, okay. that's the reason for this early meeting because this okay. is this is september you know this is when yeah. students are putting together their projects okay mm -hmm. so okay good Anything else on that? Because I do want to give you a, a short announcement. What time is it? I'm just going to hope that, you know, whenever, if, if some student bites on one of these projects or the, the, that we're suggesting that somehow they, they get back in touch with us and we have, um, you know, some clarity and, and work with them to have clarity over their goals and objectives and uh, our expectations, et cetera. Very good point. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. I would think so too. Um, outline. Did you get to grade it, them? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I certainly worked with students a whole lot in my career as a nurse, and uh, the input from me as a as a mentor or a proctor or whatever was very much important. You know, part of what was necessary. Um, okay, and I'm sure anybody else did in their careers. Um, Okay, so I want to tell you something else. Um, this, an email, got not an email, a letter, got picked up by Marla um, earlier this week. She forwarded it to me. Um, it's a letter from a gentleman named Donald Sikowski, C-Y-K-O-W-S-K-I. He owns um, approximately 30 acres over um, near Cook Road, you can look at your maps if you want. It's map number 31. It's that little one that sticks right out there. And it's lot number two. Um, so um, he has, his letter states that he has been approached by developers, but he chooses not, he chooses to conserve his land if possible. Um, Marla recalled very clearly that this is very close to the, the land that was uh, jointly acquired by East Hampton and by Southampton for water protection, right? It's April, somebody else bring me up to date on that because I wasn't involved at the time. Um, the Cook County Road Project. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, it was acquired by the, the Southampton Water Commission. They're the ones who got the money for it. And the East Hampton, I don't know what agency in East Hampton, but together they managed to do a, a multi-town um, conservation of that area in like 2012, I think, something like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at the map right now, and right south of him uh, is the major thing of U.S. Fish and Wildlife 
Sure. Reserve. Back up brought out um, by, by Marla, she noted that. Um, the gentleman lives in, in East Hampton. He lives on Pomeroy Street, which I, when I looked on this, I can see that Pomeroy Street, he, he must, it must be the back end of his property, but it's in mm -hmm. Southampton. Yeah, his property is in two towns, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody know this, this, these people? I'm, I'm having a discussion because it was a, a letter that came to us, and I'm using his name. Does anybody know this family at all, Sykowski? Yeah. No. no. Okay. So I, you know, uh, Marla made the good point that, you know, somebody ought to acknowledge his letter right away. So I did. I sent him a very brief email and just said, thank you very much. Thank you for considering conservation. Um, what we'd probably like to do is meet with you. Um, so um, I am not back in town for another week or so, but I didn't know if anybody wanted to. I don't have a specific date right now, but is anybody um, from this committee interested in going with me and just listening to him essentially and not, you know, we can find out what he's really looking for at this point and then we can go back and, and this is a really good exercise, you know, as to where we go from here. I asked mm -hmm. Marla. I asked Marla what she would have done if there wasn't an open space committee. She said she would have potentially considered contacting East Hampton, consider our, contacting our Water Commission, considering the um, Fish and Wildlife Organization, to you know find out what the options might be for for all of that. So, um, Cindy, could you read his letter? Is it brief? Uh, I can forward it to you. I'm sorry, I don't have it right in front of me, oh. Diane. It's very I mean, short. This, what did he say? Anything besides that he wants to conserve the land? He actually said he wants to know if we want to buy it. He said oh. that. Yeah. Okay. That's, val <laughs> that's valuable information. Yeah. 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 And I'm but assuming he, it's, said, he said it's yeah. conserve. He said he's been approached by developers and he wonders if we want to buy the land because he would prefer to conserve it. Yeah. So, so it's what Most has likely. happened along yeah. Pom Sorry, Chris, can you guys no, no. hear me all right? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Go ahead, April. So I don't know if you guys have been down Pomeroy Street lately, but there are brand new um, house upon house upon house on that side of the road that have been being built in the past year and a half. So I, I can think of maybe five or six new houses along that side of the road. So... I'm sure that same builder or builders um, are looking to just keep going. And it might be interesting to, looks like he might have enough um, up front on street frontage to be able to sell those office building lots and sell the back land. Um, it, that could be a win-win. Um, let East Hampton have the development and we can save the back half in Southampton anyways, but um, it, it's an idea. I can give you his address. I can actually read the letter. I found it on my, on my phone here. He lives at 86 Pomeroy Meadow, excuse me, Pomeroy Street in East Hampton, 86. To whom it may concern, we own approximately 29 to 30 acres of land in Southampton, which abuts Cook Road. We have, a pro we have been approached by builders interested in developing this land, but we would prefer to see it used as conservation land. It is over the aquifer, which would increase the protection of the water supply. If you are interested in purchasing this land, I would be happy to talk with you about it. The city of East Hampton might even be willing to help pay for the land. What I don't know is, has he already approached the city of East Hampton? Has he approached anybody else? I mean, to me, there's just open-ended questions, you know, as mm -hmm. to what he wants. Um, and uh, anything that you, you two realtors hear about anything regarding this, you know, let's go so, from there. Paula, have you worked with Jeff Bagg, who's the planner over in East Hampton at all? Not at all. Okay. So he's... Um, He's pretty approachable, and he has an assistant the last before COVID. Um, so the planning, I guess the planning board would be the first place I'd go to see if there's any potential where the two city, the two towns could jointly um, buy this and make the landowner happy with the amount of money that he's getting. Did you say planning board? Is that yeah. What you say? yeah. I don't know who's on a conservation commission, but I would go to the planning board first. 
to the East Hampton Planning Board? Yeah. Okay. His name is Jeffrey Bagg, B-A-G-G. -G. I'm assuming this land is not in chapter, right? So. We don't know that. Um, I don't I know. have it on my map as, as having, um, I don't have it marked as chapter, but I do have his name on the map that I did. So, yeah, I see that. And um, I'm going to tell you, I also emailed Barbara LaFlame, who was very instrumental in, right. uh, in the coordination of that acquisition of the, of the land for water. And she just emailed me back. Uh -huh. So I can, I can read her letter to you right this minute. Well, that was her land that yeah. she sold. It was her family's land. Yeah. Okay. So she's familiar with this since she said, hi, Cindy, open space members and planning board members. This is an opportunity not to be missed. Mr. Sykowski has considered conveying this property for conservation purposes for many years. He lives on Pomeroy Street in East Hampton, where he sold some East Hampton frontage to several developers that have built residential homes. What makes this property so appealing for conservation consideration is that it abuts other property owned by the Commonwealth that extends along Mountain Road in Southampton to Labrie Lane residential subdivision of, off Southampton Road in Holyoke, and basically to Cook Road, excluding frontage residences, and to land formerly owned by Southampton directly across from her house. This parcel sits directly over the Barnes Aquifer, East Hanson, and that's East, Hanton, East Hampton's sole source of water. And because of that is an important water source, which also indirectly is a water source for Southampton Municipal Water co customers. We get a lot of water from East Hampton, right? For many years, the Kazuja family, K-U-Z-E-J-A. Kazuja, I know them. And do you know Anna Block? That was in parentheses after Kazija. Maybe she was part of that thing. It might have been an, uh, a, a relative, I think, might have just passed away, though. Or maybe not. Don't know. Worked, she said that for many years, the Kazija family, Anna Block, worked tirelessly to protect that entire area, even conveying the land where East Hampton's water supply tank is located. I could go on with many reasons why this is important for both Southampton and East Hampton. Best wishes to all members considering this project. An opportunity such as this should be enthusiastically added, uh, acted upon. Let me know if you need further information or documentation. Well, she does have some knowledge and history of this, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, the Casija family had a farm over on Hendrick Street, um, and uh, there's, um, there's some of their property I think that's been that's been under chapter for a long time but uh, yeah I definitely know that family I've got to jump off to another meeting so okay and I've got to jump off too we will continue discussing this later if anyone chooses to go with me to this to meet this family just to talk with them um, let me know what Cindy a half a thought how about maybe somebody like Matt Christie from water to go with you yeah that's a very good thought or willingness. Or what? Or um, Barbara. Yeah, Barbara could go. But yeah, water would be good to go, I think. They're the okay. ones who bought the other land. Okay, those are great ideas. Thank you. Okay, so we're still meeting next Thursday. Obviously, we have a ton to do. Um, is there any other uh, business at all before this meeting tonight? Or can we, or do I hear a motion to adjourn? Oh, so we're already scheduled for next so we don't have to schedule a new meeting. We're scheduled for next Thursday at 6 p.m. by his Outside. Meeting. I'm going to say outside. Is, this, is that? Well, I, I'm not here next week. I'm sorry. I'm still up here in Vermont. So it has Thank to be you. Zoom again. I'm so sorry. I can't think of any way to do it. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, all in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 We adjourned at 7. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.